if you remember back to the beginning of 2017, there was a lot of uncertainty around tax reform. There was a lot of uncertainty around the regulatory environment. And as the year progressed in 2017, some of those issues began to come into focus for dealmakers. As 2018 begins, and we go throughout 2018, we believe we'll see more deal activity because of the lack of uncertainty that deal makers have to consider. Overall, we think deal values will trend up in 2018. In 2017, really there was a lack of buyers in the marketplace in many markets. Some of that was driven by uncertainty among buyers about the speed at which they could get a deal approved and whether in fact they could get the deal approved at all. We think a lot of that uncertainty will go away, has gone away, as we, as we go into 2018 and, and look at deal volume in 2018. In addition, we believe in the adage that banks are sold more than bought. And so we think more certainty around deal execution will drive more sellers into the marketplace in 2018. One of the deal barriers that we see as we talk to clients throughout the country is the fact that they haven't done a transaction for almost a decade. We hear that from a number of clients where they feel like they've really lost the muscle memory internally as an institution to execute a transaction. The due diligence playbooks, if they still have them, are, are obsolete or dated. Uh, the team that they typically used when they, were, when they were performing a transaction and going through diligence and deal closure, that team's generally no longer in existence. And so we feel like a lot of teams have thought through the last half of 2017 and the first half of 2018 as a period where they need to really think about their internal resources, rebuild the playbook so that they're ready to perform transactions in 2018. We think it's really important for any acquisitive bank to have an M&A playbook. We think it's also very important for that playbook to be up to date. If you think about the transactions that are occurring in 2017 and 2018, in many cases they're very different than the transactions that happened five or ten years ago. Those differences might be around the technology of the target company. They might be around the, the executive team and how that executive team is compensated. And it's really important that the, the M&A playbook is updated for the types of transactions that are happening today. We also think it's very important to consider the advisors you're bringing in to the transactions. Oftentimes it's really important to have a, a great M&A legal team involved or to have an investment bank or an accounting firm that can help you evaluate the target company and help you close the transaction. And those things are, as well should be really well documented in the M&A playbook. Finally, we think both from a board standpoint and a regulatory standpoint, they're looking for process. And an M&A playbook demonstrates the executive team has thought about the M&A process and are doing everything they can to mitigate risks. We think a key consideration for many banks entering a more acquisitive period is whether they've got the right talent internally to help them execute transactions. In many cases, the corporate development groups that existed at acquisitive banks maybe five or ten years ago that team is, is smaller than it once was, or the resources are very different than it looked when banks were very active on the deal front. In some cases, the more senior people have moved on to other roles within the organization, or perhaps have retired. And so we think that it's really important to consider the talent and the number of people on your team who have deal experience, and think about whether you need to build that team internally to be ready for a more acquisitive period in 2018.